Hello and welcome to the Tuesday Night Music Show. Yep. Again. 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 Same Another guys Tuesday. Yeah. It's the same guys as always. Howie. One every week. It's I'm Jay. Here. I'm here. It's myself. Yeah. And we're here to maybe talk about music. I don't know. Mm. You guys want to do a couple pop topics this week? Sure. Whatever. Yeah. Sure. Whatever you want. If you need a minute on this, we'll move on to something else. And I understand okay. if you need a minute on this. We've talked about different albums before from the past that were really good front to back, or we just enjoyed listening to. Like most of the albums, pretty good, whatever. Sure. You got any off the top of your head that you'd recommend anybody checking out? Really good album. They could just check the whole thing out. Regardless of genre? Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. You know what? Why don't we do this? I, I'm top three. Okay. Island albums you have to have. Island. Okay. Island. No, I, oh, I, I wasn't. I wasn't going you on. Want to go there? I mean, the one that comes to mind first is Almond Brothers Live at Fillmore East. Okay. Yeah. It's that an amazing, like back, like front to back, an amazing yeah. album. I was gonna say like without. Um, You're gonna say Transformer. Live, Live at Budokan. Cheap Kirk Trick may not have had a career. That's a good album. That's, That's a good a album. It's a good very album. good album. It 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 outdid the original. I see a theme starting here. Let's continue on with live albums. I would say Peter Frampton comes alive. It comes alive, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Aerosmith live bootleg and Thin Lizzy mm -hmm. live and dangerous. Well, you burnt up most of the good live albums there. Okay, I think there's still a few nice. a few in the in the mm -hmm. barrel. You know, <laughs> I, I think the thing, Brian, is, you know, and, and we're very fortunate, you and I and Howie and everyone in the chill room, especially, and everyone involved with Disc Jockey News TV, we're constantly going forward into music. And it, sometimes it's music that we're not into. It might be music we're not even familiar with. I, I now have a new crate in my, you know, laptop called Tropical House. Yeah. I didn't know what that was a week ago. I knew all the artists that are in the crate, but I didn't know that this had a heading. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're, I'm constantly trying to like, how do I take the, the old and the new and bring them together? And I think if I was looking at somebody who might be, let's say under 40 and is looking for music because, you know, I have a couple weddings this week and they're asking for things from the sixties <clears throat> all the way through today. You know, what, what would I want to get to? What would I want to play? And it's things like, you know, CCR and the Stones and the Beatles and, you know, where, where do you kind of go and find that music and curate that sort of tone? You know, is there a Beatles album that you'd want to run into? Well, go ahead, Howie. The Beatles didn't do a live album that I know no, of. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I, I know we started with live, but now I'm He's got ADHD we just go tonight. to... We just oh, go okay. to the studio. I didn't give an album yet. Jay's already monologuing. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, for me personally, it would be Aerosmith, Get Your Wings. I could sit for the rest of my life and listen to that album in its entirety and never once look back and say, I'm missing anything. I absolutely would be happy and satisfied if that's all I had to listen to for the rest of my life. Well, I wasn't thinking about the, the ultimate album. I was just thinking about a good album, you know. I mean, when it comes to the one album I had to have on a desert island, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, what would yours be, be, Brian? Well, I don't know if this would be the album. I, I'd have to take about a month and a half to figure that out. But an album I was just thinking about that was really good, and I'd kind of forgotten about how good it was. I talked to you guys about it the other night in the show. was the Billy Idol Rebel Yell album. Oh, yeah. I forgot yeah. how good it was. Great There's only eight tracks on it, you know? It was that but period like, when there wasn't a lot going on on an album. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, that's mm -hmm. what you had back then. And six of the eight tracks I, I truly enjoy. Uh, yeah. Now, the other two tracks aren't bad songs. They're just not for me, you know. Right. But what made me think of it was I was out in the car. Excuse me. And I wanted to listen to something different. And I don't normally listen to First Wave on Sirius XM, Richard Blade's channel, who's a nice, Richard really Blade, nice guy. Super nice guy. Yeah. So I well, I'll check it out, you know, because it's it's new wave, and <laughs> I, I'm sorry for anybody out there who who digs these artists, but anytime they'll play like psychedelic furs or Elvis Costello, I skip the track because I don't enjoy those artists. 
mm-hmm. but I like more of the rock stuff and more of the dance stuff they play. So they played just to my surprise, a song I hadn't heard probably since 1983 or 1984, Billy Idol Blue Highway. Yeah, great. Song. And and it just was like it was the right song at the right time. It was 80 degrees. I'm I'm in the car. It's running out great. I got a stretch of road in front of me, and you better believe I started speeding. Yeah. It was just a good driving song. It was a good tune. And even, you know, I remember listening to the Rebel Yell album. I have it back here. I bought it when it was new. And I would hear the song, but it wasn't really a song that turned me on. I, it was okay, you know? But in that moment, there wasn't a song I wanted to hear more than that tune when it was on. It was like the perfect song at the perfect time. It was a surprise, and it was cool. You know so what? It, I, it, occur, oh, it ahead, occurs Harry. to me when, when you mentioned album. Have you noticed nobody's making albums? It's mostly singles. And then when they have enough singles, they'll make a greatest hits type thing. Well, the, the EP no, is nobody, big too. Yeah the, yeah, the EP, maybe, okay, so you get three, four songs maybe. But nobody's really making albums. I don't think people digest music that way. This is the thing why I've always hated right. iTunes. I hate mm-hmm. ratings. Don't tell me if I look at... Def Leppard's High and Dry album, don't give me all the bars go to the right side on Bringing on the Heartache, but none of them go to the right side on, you know, Let It Go or Saturday Night or Lady, you know, Midnight or whatever, because those are the tracks I really liked on the album. So you make me feel like I'm inferior in my taste, but you also dictate where I'm supposed to go with music. That's the the absolute worst thing you can do with music is tell people what they're supposed to like. Well, there was a time right. with, with albums when an artist put some thought into <clears throat> what track went where, what was the first track, what was the right. second track. Right, they had track, a theme going on. That, 100%. Yes. The, the one that yeah. comes to mind, uh, well, there are a couple that come to mind, but the first one that comes to mind, the first one I noticed that really had a theme where front to back, it was like, okay, this isn't a mistake, was David Bowie, Young Americans. Because it, Absolutely. Takes, it, it takes you on this mm-hmm. ride, and it mellows yeah. you out, and it brings you up, and it's gorgeous. It's basically the artist is DJing Ziggy Star- to you. Uh, Stardust, too. Right. Well, all the old Bowie was yeah. just an artist, but, but yeah. the thought I was trying to get out here is that yeah. the artist is DJing for you with the music they just wrote. Right. There's a reason right. they're right. in this order. You know, it's a concept mm-hmm. without being a concept. I, mean, I have to that. say, Dark Side of the Moon is the same way. Dark oh, Side absolutely. of the Moon absolutely, absolutely paints absolutely. a picture from beginning to end the without Beatles a stop. Yeah. yeah, because when I saw it, um, they would do they did the whole Dark Side of the Moon album, and even you know, I saw them like 20, 30 times. If they did Dark Side of the Moon, they would do the entire album in order. You know, yeah. it, no different than any of, any of their other albums. If they did that, you know, and until uh, Pulse uh, came along, then right. they mixed it up a bit. But I mean, know? I think it's sad for kids now. And when I say kids, I'm talking anyone under 40 because they didn't get to go to, you know, a band that I really love. It's a band called Queensryche. You two may not yeah. even know. Mm-hmm. Okay. You probably I know heard the name. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, they had a great album right called. Um, Operation Mind Crime, which was a concept album, and it was done beginning to end. So there was a strategy, like the tracks really didn't end. There was little blurbs and voices, and it was a continuation mm-hmm. for an hour. So sure. they toured it as a doing Operation Mind Crime from beginning to end. That was mm-hmm. a big thing, but I'm also talking mm-hmm. in 1990. You now, know. today, nobody mm-hmm. is coming up with a concept album and saying, look, we're doing this front to back in <clears> order. <throat> Because we're telling a story. I think but, music is not delivered yeah. that way. You know, you know, a Prince collector. I mean, mm-hmm. have been for yes. many years. Print, the yeah. artist Prince. You like the Prince. artist Prince. Yes. Oh. Not, not, not like, you know. Let me make Prince a note Albert of that. I was unaware of this, Brian. You no, know, not Prince Albert Prince in the can. Kind and of has a YouTube channel. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I remember something that I always wanted to get a hold of and I could never find. And I'm sure now I could if I wanted to, and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I wanted to get the promotional copy of the CD of Prince's Love Sexy. 
And the reason I wanted the promotional copy of it was because the commercial release of that was not trackable. It was one track. Prince wanted you to listen to that whole thing front to back. Just go. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So Good Prince Love Sexy is one track. Wow. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, he really wanted to hear it like that. You know, it's the same concept with, uh, like you were mentioning, Dark Side of the Moon. To try to chop them into individual songs, it's almost impossible because there's always a riff that leads into the next song. Oh, they all flow, yeah. Yeah, they all flow that way. Um, sure. Uh, I think the Cars um, debut album was exactly the same way. There you go. Yes. And how about... Um, kick out the jams, MC5 live, <laughs> the live yes, version. Now, yeah, I, I okay. I'm familiar with, and I know, but you would know more. I I didn't have yeah. that album. That's so. like whoa, you know. I mean, that was a, you know, it, the album was a concert. You know, mm-hmm. it was it was cool. It still is cool. Well, it's just you know how people consume you now. Back to what Jay said, mm-hmm. and you know it, it's. I've always liked singles because I'm a DJ and I want to pick the hottest stuff to play for people. But for my private mm-hmm. listening, it might be a little different. Mm-hmm. And but I mean, I you were, have... I'm, I'm sorry, Brian, you were here the other night when I made the comment. It amazes me now when you look at these albums that took them a year or two to make and there's eight songs. I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> how, how did rumors take a year and a half? There's eight songs. Listen to the eight songs on the album. But that's the thing. They're so amazing. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. And, and now you look at, and I think it was Def Leppard and Metallica. I want to say Metallica was the first cassette tape to break an hour. Yeah. And Def Leppard was like literally on their heels. And they're both managed by the same management company. And it was that, wait a second, there's an entire hour of this? Like, that's insane. Well, because we talked I about loved, that. I love, you know, Black Sabbath's Heaven and Hell. It's 38 minutes long. That was kind of a tech- album. Yeah. That was kind of a technology thing because, and I was I was telling you guys back to Prince again, the original Prince 1999 CD, the first release of it, didn't have uh, DSMR on it because it wouldn't fit. But the re-release of it a few years later had it on there because CDs had gone, the data, you could put more data on a disc. I think the first ones you could do like 60 minutes. Then they added another 12 minutes, so it went to 72 minutes of audio on a CD. It was that 740 and then it, and over then it, and then it went 600, to 80, whatever. 80 minutes is the max on a CD now. Yeah. Oh, is yeah. it, it's 80 now? 80, yeah, 80 minutes. Okay, because yeah. I know it was yeah. 72, but they, they were able to squeeze yeah. more tracks on there. Right. So, I, I think that the downside for the three of us will always be, and it's the same with my children, you can be inspired and excited by songs and music and artists, but the delivery system does not give it to you in a way that you have to anticipate, wait, or be inspired by what's coming. It's just there. If I say to you, yeah. oh, you're not familiar with the Black Sabbath album? Oh, you go to YouTube and bang, you can listen to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. We didn't have that. It was, there was a sense of longing. I've often told this story, I'll tell it very, very quickly. I had mowed a lawn for the Delelises around the corner from my house. I had the money in my pocket. I went to Belmont Music. And on the same day, in probably April, late April of 1979, I bought The Police at Lando's Neamore and Cheap Trick live at Budokan. Wow, you got a lot of money from one lawn. Well, no, 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 not one cutting. This is several. Okay, maybe a okay. couple months worth. I think Don't I got say. like five bucks a cutting. You got three to five bucks a cut, you were lucky. No. Yeah, so I had to save up. But I remember drive, riding my white Ross five-speed bike home, <laughs> getting home and having two albums and trying to figure out which one to go with and mm-hmm. dropping the police on first. And I want to say the first track in the police vinyl is um, like So Deep or something yep. and then it worked its way up to Roxanne. So Lonely. So Lonely. And just, I, I mean, I was stunned. But that's how I ingested music. I put it on the first track. I played through side one. I flipped it and played through side two. And I read the liner notes. And it was an experience. Music isn't the experience now. Music has become a foregone conclusion that it's just there in the background. 
Well, and it's kind of sad to me. When you no. say about music that makes sense driving the Mustang, there's music that makes sense during the day that doesn't make sense during the night to me. Yeah, for yeah, everybody, you know, digests it differently. But, you mm -hmm. know, maybe instead of shaking our fist at the sky at these kids today, we no, should just it's not talk them. about not me. we should just it's talk the about artist. the joy of the concept album or the, the joy of songs arranged in an interesting way on an album or the joy of having oh. an album. The joy of lighter notes, you know, does I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here had I not seen Pink Floyd live doing the entire dark side of the moon as a kid, I saw that. And I was like, this is what I want to do with my yeah. life. You know, I, it was like the lighting. Oh my God. The quad I sound. Sell acid. It's like, <laughs> no, I was completely, I was, you know, geez, I didn't even know what pot was, you know? <laughs> so I, I knew what it smelled like after I got to the arena because it was an outside concert, but no, it, yeah, it was a joy. It was like, it was uh, an awakening, let's say. I saw the light. I saw the light. I was ready to walk down, kneel down and let that pastor hit me on the forehead, you know? Um, I knew what I was going to do. It's inspiring. It, it, it was ingested in a much different manner. Because there was that line. Was. There was that knowledge of, oh, wow, the new Little Feet Let It Roll album. Wow, Jackson now Brown and James mm -hmm. Taylor are doing background vocal. Oh, wait, that's Bonnie Raitt? I didn't know that was Bonnie Raitt playing slide on that. Oh, wait a second. I didn't, And it gave you this sense of, you know, you didn't have much going on. Let's be honest. You had life. You had a vehicle. You had mm -hmm. school. You had a girlfriend. You had... You know, that's why when I hear these old songs about a guy picking up his girl, going to a movie, I'm like, it's not romantic. It's life. It's not stoic. It's not archaic. It's not old fashioned. It's reality. That's what we mm -hmm. did. I yeah. went and put 16 mm -hmm. gallons in my little Jeep Grand Cherokee today for $93. And when I did it, I couldn't help but remember putting $5 wow. into my 1968 Plymouth <laughs> <laughs> and then taking five more dollars and going to a movie with Margot, getting some popcorn, leaving the movie, going to her house, making out in front of her house for like so half was an that hour, Margo? and then calling it a night. Margot was a problem. Margot Krukanis. Margot was a Margo. problem. Margo. Always, always Margo. Which way, but M A R G O T? Was it was it she the Margot at band camp or was that a different Margot? No, it's a different Margot. This, okay. this was my first. So you girlfriend. had a variety of Margos. I did. Yes. But the first is the one that it's always going to. Pastor Jay of Margos. That's near and well, dear to the heart. I heard that she married Izzy. Izzy Iskowitz from Dewey Cheetah. There's Manhattan, talk about that. There's talk now. about it. Izzy it won't disclose. Now, so. So Izzy she just bought a new house, you. by the way, up in Beverly Hills. $8.9 million. You <laughs> yeah. ever wonder where that money comes from? You know, I don't often put on albums and listen to them. I, I just don't do it a lot. I'm usually checking out individual songs or arranging songs in order I think is interesting or listening to a DJ. I would think you would put an album on. I, could I, see I you don't the, all the, the time. The dungeon I dungeon just going. The last time I did, and I can't tell you when it was, I really enjoyed it. I put on the the uh, very first Foreigner album, the Trench Coat oh. album. And I played Needle and mm. I played Damage Done the other night. Love that, that no album. Young. No, young. no. Yeah. Damage Done is Foreigner on the first album. Oh, Foreigner. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Damage Done is a song on mm -hmm. the first Foreigner album. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it. Look it up. I'm not wrong. I, I own it. Well, I do too. It. Well, it's not. Um, no, Needle in the Damage Done is Neil Young. Okay. Yes. The Damage yeah. Done is on the very first, because I did my chill Sunday night dive bar. And but, I played yeah. Foreigner, The Damage is Done. I tell you the one that I forgot about on that mm -hmm. album. And, and I was, I. Rev I on the remember, Red Line. What? Rev on the Rev Line. Rev oh. on the Red Line. That's on the album too. I was listening to the album and I heard a song that I hadn't heard in so many years. I hadn't heard it since I was cruising around with my brother when I was a kid. Headknocker. I forgot all about that track. <laughs> That's, That's a, a great cool song. Track. That's a really yeah. good song. Yeah. Now, in my brain, for some dumb reason, I wasn't thinking to myself, "That's a foreigner song." Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't, but it is, and it's on that album. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's the last time I threw an album. It's a good album. 
It really is. It's got a lot of good songs on it. Yeah. yeah I think good. there's a lot of those out there. But again, we're speaking in a language that somebody under probably what, 35, 30 doesn't hey, understand. You when say we say that, but, but records are hot right now. Well, yeah, you know, they are. And I'm hoping they come back with and more strength. Last year was the largest sales year for CDs and vinyl mm -hmm. in 20 years. Biggest and I year. saw I saw a recent article about, you know, what people are, you know, either, you know, Shazamming or Spotifying. And there's some older tunes that they're just they're they're like, where am I going to get good music? And it's like they're they're going down a rabbit hole, kind of like, um, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack <laughs> type thing. They're all over the place, but it's all music that we treasure and know well what i find interesting and 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 you know you, it's stuff you always knew but you i don't know for some reason haven't thought about it or articulated it in quite a way where you could explain it to someone else but i can remember so many just times in my life when there was some great music out there that i was really into and i was enjoying it and it was fun and mm -hmm. and I, I just didn't have time for anything but that. Like, I, I didn't want to worry about this other stuff because this stuff was so good. You know, it was so good. I talk about country and kind of tongue in cheek, but it's true. Every mm -hmm. time I hear a country song, I can't help but think to myself, I could be listening to a Rick James song with my time right now. I'm wasting precious time listening to this mm -hmm. country song because I could totally be listening to, you know, dance with, with me or something. But now I can go back and I can check out some of the stuff that I missed the first time. And some and that's of the what stuff... I loved about like Ronco and k -Tel Records and, <laughs> you know, it's Saturday yeah. night and it would be 10 or 12 or 15 songs from all over the, the map and you'd suddenly be exposed to different things. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't hate on any genre and I'm always open to hear something like, oh, I kind of like this. I think the problem today is if you say country today versus country when you and I think of country, it's not really the same thing. No, the, no. And that's, that's not what I meant. What I meant was, yeah. okay, let's say that you go to, to this barbecue place, this amazing <clears throat> barbecue place. Right. Or, or let's just say you go to this amazing restaurant row. Yep. And there's, there's barbecue and there's pizza and there's steak and there's seafood and there's every kind of food you can think of. And, and in your brain, you're just totally in the mood for steak. Right. You go to the steakhouse because it's the best stuff. It's what you like the most. You right. get a great cut. You eat it. It's delicious. And then you go down that road again. I need that steakhouse again. And this time you're going to get a different cut. You get a potato with it. Maybe, maybe you get some shrimp with it or something, you know? Sure. I mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. you're, skipping the, you're skipping the Italian joint. Every time you're skipping the Italian joint. Right. But the Italian joint is amazing. Yep. But you keep skipping it to go to the steakhouse. You I'm like going to the like. Italian joint now. I'm going hey, to a Mexican to restaurant. Up. You know, that's what I'm doing now. I'm going back and checking out everything that I just didn't have time for because I had to get to the steakhouse. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. it, and you know what? It, it makes so much sense. I bet I'm right when I say this. I bet you don't have one traffic album behind you. No, I don't. Yeah. And I bet if you sat down I and do. listened... To something like Low Spark of Ohio Boys, no, I was just oh, walk away and think, you know what? Just, this is a yeah. freaking amazing song. Amazing. Oh no, no, you don't. Yeah, I, I don't dislike traffic. I, no, no, no. I, I'm not I'm, saying you dislike it. I'm saying yeah. now that you're expanding and saying I'm used to getting steak and potatoes, mm -hmm. but now I'm going to try tacos and I'm going to try lasagna. And I'm going to try these other things. I think yeah. it will only open up your and expand your love of music. Well, it's interesting. Uh, something else I was thinking right. about. There's a guy that's a DJ. I won't call anybody out. Does he have a plane? No, he doesn't have a, he's, not, he's not that cool. He's Nor does he have a live-in pilot. But he's he's very into R and B and funk and deep cuts. Like that's his joint. And recently he has been trying to expand into rock. Is it something he never paid any attention to? Sure. And on social media, I noticed he's listing these mad lists of artists, like A through Z. 
but he's doing it in fragments. <clears throat> And he's like, today I covered A through M. That's like I well, maybe it's this week or whatever it is. I covered these things. Mm -hmm. And I made a comment on 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 a social media post, and I meant what I said. And and I didn't mean any disrespect with this, but I'm thinking to myself, it's not enough to know the artists or even the songs. No, it's not enough to know you know 20,000 rock tracks it's everything to know 10 great ones that your audience is going to care about yeah whether it's in their lexicon or not that's when you hit it that's when you made it Brian, Brian don't you think you can always tell I think I can don't you think you can always tell when the DJ is into what they're playing and when they're not well, like, yeah, of course. I mean, right. yeah. So I think the same is true when someone gets into new music. Don't just say, I looked this up, the top 200 tracks are these. Who cares? If you're yeah. not into it, do yourself a favor. Get the top 200 maybe, but then deep dive the artist and find that track you mm-hmm. love because people mm-hmm. are so happy when it looks like you're into what you're doing. Well, I'm not into most of the stuff I play at weddings. I, I'm in, yeah, but you know, I think weddings are a little I'm different. Not. But we're talking more genre specific. Of, hey, I'm into R and B and funk, but now I'm getting into rock. Get into rock you like for a reason. Don't just throw it out there. No, like, as, as I'm a playing listener, Aerosmith, walk this way. I've never played Aerosmith, walk this way. But as ever. a listener, and, and is is a different deal than a DJ. You know. Right, really, but I think as, I, as as a listener, you need to absolutely listen to what you like. As a DJ, you need to live with these tracks, like really live with them. I think right and absorb them and and know how an audience is going to react. Now, the only way to know this is to try things. Right. Every land requests. Well, but if you're you know. If, if you if you're empathetic enough with your audience and you care enough about your audience to listen to your audience or or even the types of people who might be in your audience let's say you're listening to somebody who's your age for instance <clears throat> what you like Very spend some young. time with that person find out what they like find out what they dig and, right. and sample it from mm-hmm. several people then make that choice and, right. and then you know know okay this is a deep cut I mean I'm confident to say <clears throat> that no one is looking at me saying, when I think mid to early 70s funk, R&B, B-sides, Jay's the guy. But I get a call today for a brewery <clears throat> excuse me, who came to me through Twitch, through somebody else that said, oh, I got a guy, you should go check him out. And they said, hey, we saw a set you did, some like early 70s funk stuff. We, we want to hire you to do this event. I'm like, really? Like, yeah, our audience is like young, like 20, 30 somethings. And they're trying to get into like the old school. They love that vibe. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know anything you played. We caught one of your dive things and we totally, that's what we want. And I'm like, great. But it's based on me just saying, I, in my head can hear this music as a soundtrack to Dirty Harry movies. But I was willing to then go spend some money and buy some music Mm -hmm. because it all sounded good to me. And I think Mm -hmm. that that's part of the DJ thing where you get to deliver things because you're on board. I can always tell when a DJ is not into what they're playing. When a DJ is there doing a Judas Priest, Iron Maiden set, you can see when they're on their phone like, okay, they can't stand this. And I almost Mm -hmm. feel like going over saying, Dude, just play what you're into because I think people will enjoy it more. Because you, there's a yeah. sense that when the artist is performing their art, it's better than when someone is dialing it in or just going, yeah. here you go. Well, I mean, I got a an offer today to do a Mexican quinceanera. And I say Mexican quinceanera because they're Spanish-speaking folks from Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I had the date already booked, but I wasn't the guy for the job. Art couldn't do it. Art was booked and he was trying to throw it to me. And I'm like, are you comfortable with it? I'm like, well, okay. Am I the, am I the best guy for the job? No, 
could I do it? Sure, I guess. You know, I could make it happen with requests and lists and things like that. But as far right. as passion for 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 Banda, no, I don't have that. Now, on the other hand, you know, when I was doing those salsa clubs way back, and it was way back. It's funny to think about it, but it was way back when I was doing salsa clubs. I don't speak a lick of Spanish. And and I did it all by ear. I mean, I had these tracks and I knew what tracks were good because I knew what tracks I like to dance to and would do salsa and gay bachata in rotation all night. And I didn't know my music like like the other DJs did who came in there and played. I was like the 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 substitute that would come in. But the bar liked me better because I wasn't playing the same crap every week like the other right. guys were playing. You weren't hitting the bangers that everyone expected. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't playing, you know, I, I guess our equivalent to the Cupid shuffle and celebration by cool in the gang. I was doing different things, you know, right. I have a meeting tomorrow, by the way, I just got hired to do a quinceanera. Yeah. Now everything you know about me says, is he the right guy for the job? I'm good friends with the dad and I know what the dad's into. And if the dad had his way, this would be the first and only Carl Cox driven Quinceanera. Right, right. But he understands <laughs> he's not the hardcore quinceanera. Mm -hmm. His wife is Mexican. Right. He's Filipino. Yeah. And he's like, I know you can bridge that gap. I've got one of those coming up too. I want some of the quinceanera things. And I'll make a phone call between JC and the hundred DJs I know in this area and say, Hey, I've got a quinceanera. Are there certain standard things I have to play? Oh, you have to play these eight songs. Okay, thank you. And then for the rest of the night, I can dance between those and this and this and this and this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't, I, I, you know, I understand where you feel you're not the right DJ, but I also think there's that point of, you know what? I may not be the right DJ, but I can make myself the right DJ. I can make it happen. No, absolutely. I can make point. it. No, so I, I, you know, I, to, to hardline it either way, I think is wrong. You know, just, just, am mm -hmm. I, I'm not passionate about, you know, I'm not and, either. Uh, Tejano, but I'm passionate Joe. about the event being successful the same way you are. Right. But am I into what I'm playing? Not really. I mean, mm, but out of three or four, you know? I mean, well, here in California, the, the Kinsinger is 45 minutes long. So it's a lot of music <laughs> I've come up with. It's a lot of music. Just play music Selena's thing. greatest hits and go home. Yeah. I could do that. I could yeah. do that. I mean, it starts at four, it ends at four thirty. So, I mean, there's a time frame that I have to fill. I mean, I don't know, Brian, your events, what are they? Probably an hour or too long. So, you yeah. know, you don't well wait, you're started Saturday and end on Monday. So it's Thursday. different for yeah. you. It is different. Mm. You know, I've got an event similar to the one that you've booked, and it's funny. I, I'm talking to this guy. He contacts me because I came recommended having a quinceanera for our daughter. Okay. You know, we don't speak Spanish. You know, she just happens to be. And you're quarter, Puerto Rican. So that's a, right a there. Quarter la, la, Latina. I'm like, all right. Well, we really, you know, are just kind of want to want, you know, like alternative rock stuff and you know, I like, you know, 80s music and my kid likes more alternative kind of stuff. And all right. good. so I, I'm, I get off the phone with this guy and I'm thinking to myself, why did you just call me and say, we have a daughter who's turning 15. We have a birthday party for her. Right. Because there's nothing quinceanera about this. Right. They don't want to do anything. But do you have to do the protocol stuff? The, like no. See, I don't no, know. I gotta talk nothing. to him tomorrow and find out because I'm like, oh, then that's a what is that thing party, called right. when they all come out and they do this thing and they do it's this it's thing? the core. Yeah. JC will tell you. Uh, they're, they're, oh yeah, they're guys and they're they're like the yeah, it's a court. And I got hired for a bar mitzvah and the dad calls me and he goes, yeah, I got a bar mitzvah on this date. I was at a wedding you did three weeks ago. You killed it. That's what I want. I'm like. Okay, I remember that wedding. It was great. I remember the bride and groom. We had a great time. It was a lot of house music. And this is like <laughs> 10, 15 years ago. I'm like, but there was nothing about that that's a bar mitzvah. He goes, right. trust me, I'll walk you through the section you have to do. And I'm like, oh, okay. Right, because yeah. I'll give you the song names way ahead of time. You just stand there, play those five songs, and then do what you did at the wedding. 
He yeah. goes, it'll be great. I go, <laughs> so how many people there are under like 21? He's like, there'd be like maybe 30 kids for the bar mitzvah. I go, how many adults? He's like 150. I'm like, right. Oh, oh okay. okay. So you just want me to, so you want me to play kids music and the bar mitzvah and then just go nuts. He goes, that'll be perfect. It was a great event. But yeah. it's the most non-bar mitzvah I've ever done. I don't know why they, they call them that. You know, it's like That's, at that point, it's like we got this old white Irish Catholic yeah. guy doing the DJ. Like, this right. is not making sense. Right. But that's the beauty of being a DJ. I don't have to be Jewish. I don't have to be Mexican. I don't have to be anything. I get to show up yeah. and give what I know and make people enjoy them. Agree 100%, but it contradicts be passionate about what you play. That's but, all I'm saying. But I'm passionate about the event the same way you are, Brian. And that's fine. Yeah, but, it, but again, it contradicts being into the music done. you play. Right. Every event you ever do, same with Howie, same with JC, same with Robin, same with Tim, same with everyone. We just want the end result to be that they had the best time they could have of had. Of course. Yeah, why, why do it if it's right. not as successful right. again? So yeah. why look at it from, I'm not passionate about these 10 songs. I'm passionate about the night. I'm passionate about the I, I couldn't agree with you more. I'm just saying that your your idea of you, you should play the songs you're into and be passionate about it because it shows if you don't, you just contradicted everything you just said. I, I'm just uh, did yeah. I really though? Did I really or did yeah, I just you did. blow your mind? <laughs> it's Think okay. About it. I'm, about I'm it. with you. I'm I'm no, no, no. now I'm with you. No, yes. no, no. I, th I think there's both sides. There's the I there love are, this, but, play but to, to present them as absolutes is bad. No, 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 no. If oh, I yes. if I did, yeah. I take that back. There are tracks that in my world I would play only for me. But yeah. in an event. The joy of it is to come out on the other side and have people literally look at you and be like, okay, I didn't expect this outcome. That's the goal. Yeah. It's like a book. Yeah. It's like a novel. They, the first page says, you know, Brian meets Blanca. They're hanging out at a Latin club. Brian's smoking a Marlboro light. Blanca comes over and bumps into him mistakenly. Blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, at the end of the book, they fall in love. They live together forever and ever, and they get married. And they never and Jay's do Jay's their pastor. I'm sorry. <laughs> they never get married. No, oh, they, I'm sorry. Okay, I, 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 they, I have a different they, they book live that I'm in reading. Sin just to piss everybody off. Right. Yeah, that's it. For a yeah. long time. But but that's the thing. It's that <laughs> you start here. No one knows like, what How's this going to go? Awesome. Yeah. Right. And the goal is, I'd love it to go this way because I'd love to play this. Yeah. But what's even more important is when you play the stuff you don't love, because you need to make it yours. You need to love yeah. it for the moment. You know, not I'm, every game is fair. Not every event yeah. is easy. We're DJs. We're professionals. We're supposed to get in the trenches, and we have an outcome goal. Fight your ass off to get there, whatever it takes. You may not love every song, but that's okay. Well, I was just thinking, you know, and I, I mentioned to you guys that I booked that car show coming up. Yes, I'm excited it's about that. Kind family. of a I'm high excited. profile one. Yeah, no, I'm excited. There, for there you. may be more to come. It's not just your regular parking lot car show. This is no, actually... you're doing the radio. Tell everyone what you're doing. I don't think everyone here knows that. Oh, it's it's uh, I, and I don't know what's going to come of it. I won't get into to all the details, but it's uh, the Dan Jansen Foundation. He was a a figure skater, uh, mm -hmm. or not a figure skater, but a speed skater, I think, and he won gold mm -hmm. medals. He's from West Dallas, Wisconsin. Uh, and the F Dan Jensen Foundation puts on an annual car show and they do radio spots and TV spots for it and billboards and everything else. And uh, my friend, Mike Guy's son, Andrew, is organizing this event and, and the foundation is paying for it. So Andrew's reached out to me to be the entertainment for it. So that's awesome. about it. It's a car show, but I'm not getting, you know, a free taco and $200 to do it. I'm, you know. No, it's the real deal, bro. You it's it's, it's a real this. gig. So no, you should be proud of this. This is a huge accomplishment. Well, it's you not, it's not an accomplishment. I just I just got a call. But no, I I'm turned looking... it down. I turned it down, and I said, "Call Brian." I mean, I <laughs> I said he'll probably do it. I can't do it. Yeah. No, what, I'm looking, what I'm looking well, forward to about it though <laughs> is is the car show music because I don't do what everyone else does, and right because you know, most people will put on like the American Graffiti soundtrack. No, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? That's what they do. And 
or or the Happy Days soundtrack or whatever. That band and Golden we, Earring, Radar Love. That's all you need. You no, know, we we did a show about that too. Yeah. And it's like, wait a minute. You know, the same old, same old, like car songs. Like, no, these people. You no, know, they want to listen to what you know what they're listening to now. You right, know, right. I mean, well, at not least only that, my experience. You know, well, what the. The, the way, and I've talked about it in the show we did, I try to think about who's in the audience. If it's boomers. Right. Okay. Right. Specifically boomers. I think of my brother. I think mm-hmm. about his friends. I think about, you know, because the idea is I'm going to play the songs that were popular when this 57 Chevy was brand new. That's not nostalgic for anybody there. No. no. What's no. nostalgic is the people who bought that car when it was 15 years old and hot rodded it. Right. right, and we're listening to Peter Frampton, yes, right, not the big bobber, exactly. So, that's Cold the and Fog Hat, exactly. Right. Yeah, so I'll mix it up. Thunder Don't Island. get me wrong, I'm mm-hmm. not going to do an evening of Fog Hat, but no. I'm mixing it up mm-hmm. a little bit. And I would do Rumble too, do Rumble. Do the I'm song considering Rumble. you know that and audience, I'm also considering the Lowriders. Right. Oh, do War, yeah. Lowriders. Yeah. Yeah. Lowrider music's deeper than the song Lowrider. There's no, some... no, no, yeah, yeah. You know who's a great source for that is Mara Luna, because he was there. Oh, oh, yeah, no, he's yeah, and yeah. he's privy me to some stuff that I didn't realize. Yeah, now, what were the Lowrider guys? He's the B to? side of like the Cool in the Gang one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, which <laughs> is a track I have that's like you listen yeah. to it, you're like, oh, where th- this is not Ladies Night or Celebration, or, at right? All. Yeah. Yeah. No, because because he's telling me no, it wasn't just War and Santana. There, no. it was We're Steely Dan. More. It was right. it was the Jacksons. It was all this mm-hmm. stuff. That Blame it on the boogie. On, on yeah, on Woodier. I mean, that's the stuff that was right. getting played. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's all over the place. But yeah, I'm but, looking yeah. forward to that because I can. But that's good. You I know. Mean, Brian, if you and I were plumbers, we would have, you know, we snake a drain and then we do this and it's a PVC pipe and it's always quarter inch this and it's always this. It's a constant. We know what to do every time. The beauty of what we do, and hence I say what we are, is that we get to walk into a room full of people who have Mm -hmm. a completely different dynamic involved and yet look at them and say, I got you. I'm going to tell you a quick story before I That's turn this the over to Howie because Howie's got something I got to talk you. about. At the end Is Howie here tonight? I don't. I don't have anything. Yeah, you do. Oh, oh there's Howie. Oh, oh remember at the end of the show? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, for the end of the show. Okay. I, I was just going to hammer my point home, which is probably sure. a complete redundant thing, but I have a story to tell. Go for it. And it's not my story to tell. It's actually my son-in-law's story to tell, but I think it's a good story. So Harris? Saturday we we had a beautiful day. And he's got the 66 Thunderbird. I need nice some car. more. It was Mikey's car. It's now Eris's car. So he gets up in the morning and he goes for a drive up and down the main drag, which is the one in front of my house. He goes down almost to downtown, turns around and comes back. So he's heading home and there's a brand new, like brand spanking new, still with dealer plates, like like the 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 dealer the paper up here, plates. We have those where it's like, you know, Bob's Ford, you know, whatever. It still had those plates on the front right. of it. It's a brand new Cadillac CTS or whatever it is. The, the cool Cadillac. Oh, the four door one? Or the yeah. two door one? Yeah. Right on his ass. Like, gonna hit him. Why? And he's like, getting this. What is going on with this car? He tries to slow down. The car slows down, tries to speed up. The car speeds up. He pulls over to one lane. The car pulls over in that lane. He's like, this is creepy, man. I don't dig this at all. Yeah. This went on for blocks. Finally, he comes to a light, and it's 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 four lane. So there's a lane next to him. He pulls up. The Cadillac pulls up next to him. The window goes down. It's this 80-year-old black lady. And she looks over and says, is that a 64? <laughs> 66. Do me a favor. When the light turns green, let me get behind you. I want to look at it a little longer. So all kinds of people are into cars. That's awesome. what I was getting at with this. That's all it's right. It's not just yeah. rock around the clock. It's not just fog hat. It's not just mm-hmm. Santana or whatever. It's it's all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff. So you got to know yeah. your audience and you got to know what the triggers are. 
And I think it makes for a really unique experience for all of them. So that's why I'm looking forward to doing it. That's a great point. That's a super great mm-hmm. point. Yeah. No, it yeah, shouldn't yeah. just be, you know, Beach Boys 409. I'll play this three right. times. Right. Play songs yeah. with the cars in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's but you got but play you, little red Corvette. You know what? You make a point that works for mm-hmm. weddings, bar mitzvahs, and everything else, Brian. You have to look at the crowd. I mean, right. what we do for a living is not play music. We read a crowd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're bringing 85,000 songs plus the internet. I've now got Tidal. I can stream. There's 25 million songs on Tidal. What good is it if I don't know what to do with it? I'm not a chef. If I go into the grocery store with a chef mm-hmm. and they go, hey, let's make meatloaf tonight. I go, great. I'll get some ground beef. I know I need an egg and maybe some breadcrumbs. I'm good. And all of a sudden, they're buying every spice in the aisle. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? We're making meatloaf. I need this, 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 this. Oh, I guess I didn't understand. But as a DJ, I do understand. Yeah. I understand that when I look at a crowd in front of me, I have to hit everyone in that crowd at some point. So I think your point is so valid by mentioning just because it's a car show, you don't just play, you know, Wipeout. You don't just play <laughs> right. this. You can't. Yeah. But we've all but, been to those car shows, right? Where you the yeah, plays yeah. Wipeout like on repeat. You look into yeah. your audience, you see who's there, and you play to them. Right. Because they're all there. For, if they're older folks, they're there their for nostalgia. stories are different. They're there for nostalgia. Right. If, if mm-hmm. they're younger, they're there to learn. But if they're older, right. they're there for nostalgia. So right. I, I just, just things I'm looking forward to. And, and yeah. a really good reason to to, as we say, read the room, where in this case, I'll be reading the parking lot. Yep. No, 100%. And I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to this, too, because it's a big deal. I don't think you're, I think you're downplaying it. You've yeah. been asked to come in and help program not only a podcast and car show. Well, we didn't get into that. We won't get no, into we that didn't, on, but okay. I'm, I'm doing it for you. This no, is I haven't been asked to do that yet. I, it, it well, could be you're going to, to be. I don't know. And I, I can sense where this is going. You're going to pretty much be running all the music for a huge car generation yeah. doing shows in your area. That's a big thing. You should be proud of yourself on that, dude. Uh, it, well, there's there's and, no. And, you and, it, and it circles back to what he had mentioned before about playing music you love to play. He's going to be able to do that there. Yeah. I'll play music it, that I, we'll, I feel like we'll, that the we'll audience loves. Tell. You know? If right. you're podcasting, we'll be able to look at you and, and tell if you're enjoying what you're doing. Oh, no. And, it's, and, the, and yeah. you will be. And right. that, that's, that's a story for another day that we'll talk about on another show. I would play I Darling by Beach Boys, by the way, because that's a dope <laughs> song not played enough. <laughs> Darling by Beach Boys. Trust me, if you're listening to this now and you need a good Beach Boys song, listen to Darling sometime. D-A-R-L-I-N. You'll trust me. You'll thank me. So we only have a minute or two left. Howie has something. Howie, you got the floor. I will not interrupt. Right. Um, Hearkening back to yesteryear, 2018, Irish pub, and it's raining like hell. The famous picture of the tarp over the DJ equipment and the DJs and the really tall guy right in the forefront of the picture is Mr. Bob Powell, who had about with COVID-19, was in the hospital for over 50 years, sent me this. Brian got one as well. It's his. Did you say you're in the hospital for over 50 years? He did. He, I didn't want he, to say anything. No, I'm sorry. Uh, 50 days. I'm 50 days. He 50 was days in is 50 years is different. Yeah. yeah way I didn't different. want to say anything, but I was like, oh, wow. he no, went he, when he was I, two I and he got out anyway, last year. Anyway, a shout out to Bob. Thank you so much. I know that a lot of you other folks out there got these shirts too. And I've been meaning to do this and I forgot uh, to give him a I shout out. I got my shirt. It's it's he, two flights up. I got a lovely note from Bob. Thank you very much. Beautiful. And, yeah, beautiful notes to everybody. He loves the insiders and he's always wearing the shirt and he loves the people in the chill room. I got in the note and he asked me to thank all of you in the chill room. And, he's doing well now. And he, oh yes, yeah, that's oh, awesome. Yes. He's back. Yep. Yeah, he's Good. back. He is yep. back. Because we're talking. Yep. I mean, I don't want to bring it down too much, but we're talking back uh, Jimmy Spin days, 2018. Correct. Well, yeah, Jimmy was there. He was covering Jimmy's yes. stuff. That's yeah, my was, point. He was protecting you know? Jimmy's stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy so, had the Evolve 50 setup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just gonna get yeah. a quick shout out to our boy Jimmy Spin. Of course. And every yeah, yeah. Oh. and that just goes yeah. without saying. Nope. 
that just goes without saying jimmy was a friend to all of us and oh yeah but you know what the thing with jimmy and the way i look at it i know i look at these type of things differently than a lot of people may but jimmy's always with me yeah and jimmy's always he here in this room he as he far is. as i'm concerned he's yep. always here mm -hmm. And he lives through all of us because he's inspired and influenced all of us. And now we are the caretakers of the spirit. Yes. So I, I, I don't. Couldn't agree more. I don't. Um, it's what, not an ending. It's for? a continuation. Actually, hold it's, on. It's Wait, it's an honor and a privilege that I don't take lightly. How's that sound? That I right. carry his spirit here. Jimmy's actually Beautiful. speaking to me right said. now. Beautifully said. Hold on. What's that? He wants to know why you're wearing a crisscross jacket or a hoodie there, Brian. Because <laughs> I'm cold. Oh, okay. He's cold, Jimmy. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate all of you for doing it and putting up with Jay. Thank you for that. Where are you? Bye, everybody. Good night, everyone. <laughs>